Hello, welcome to E.G. and Friends. My name is Eldon, and I'll be your host. Today we'll be presenting President's Games, otherwise known as Every Game Ranked for February 2022. This is every game that I played in the month of February 2022 ranked. Ah, uh, this, um, let's see here. This month, I played uh, 24 games, uh, eight of them new to me, and uh, I don't know, let's get on with this. Let's see if any of them were any good. So, uh, number one, or number 24, I should say, uh, Uno it has pretty much always been uh, the last, uh, last ranked game of the month, uh, whenever it shows up. Um, once again, people I love, love to play it. And um, I'm not a curmudgeon, so there that is. Anyway, Uno, number 24. Uh, number 23 this month is a one, the first new to me game on the list. Uh, this is uh, Taco vs. Burrito by Alex Butler, made by Hot Taco Incorporated. Uh, this was introduced to me by a friend at work who uh, is into games, and uh, she introduced this to me. I did not love it. It's a, it's a take that um, game where you are playing cards to your taco or burrito and uh, you're just adding like crazy foods into it which have different point values uh, it has a some semi clever play where you are has like a, I forget the name of the card but you can put negative point cards in your thing and at some point you can try and swap your taco or burrito with your opponent and um, yeah I don't know I'm trying to it's just very much in the vein of Uno. It's in that same kind of vein of game for me. And, um, except for it's a little more, um, no, it's, it's very much like Uno. Uh, it's different, but very much like Uno. Anyway, that's my game for this month. Uh, number 23. Uh, number 22, Rummy Cub. Uh, which, I don't know, seems kind of weird ranking this number 22. It's actually quite a good game. Uh, this is a game I play with my parents. Um, and, um, I've played the publisher lots. Uh, this has been published by tons of people. Uh, Pressman is the version I have, uh, which I found at a thrift shop. I don't even know who is currently publishing this in the U.S. Uh, but very popular rummy style game uh, with a little clackety clack tiles. Uh, plays pretty quick, pretty easy. Uh, just a really good, enjoyable game. You can sit and chat with your with your loved ones and uh, and play it. Much better than you know. Uh, number twenty one, uh, Villa Paletti. Uh, so I picked this game up uh, quite a few years ago. Um, I had the University Games Edition that I picked up at a, um, uh, what was it called? Not really a thrift store. It's like an antique show thing. Um, anyway, I found a place that had a bunch of games, and it had this one. And uh, I know this was like a Spill the Jars winner, and I figured I'd, I should have it in my collection. And it's like a type of Uno, or a, a sorry, no, Jenga, uh, where you're taking these, uh, it has all of these columns on the on the first row, and then it has a piece of wood, and you're trying to pull them out and put them on top. And eventually, the idea is that you get higher and higher, except for it, somebody tends to make it fall uh, sooner than that. Uh, the other weird thing, I don't know if this is in all the versions, but uh, like in mine, it has this green thing that you're start, supposed to start on the bottom. Uh, it was a very old copy. It was in Trink, uh, but it was a very old copy, and that green thing was all warped. And for a game, it's all about balance. It seems not ideal. Uh, anyway, that was Villa Paletti, uh, my number 21 game of this month. Um, number 20, Happy Salmon, a uh, game I've played lots of times. Uh, I, I uh, was in charge of a uh, activity uh, with some uh, adults from church. And I brought a bunch of short games um, like this and got it played. I really enjoy uh, this uh, for certain activities. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a quick game, uh, something to get people moving, uh, works really well. Kind of silly. Uh, number 20, Happy Salmon. Number 19, Tuck Tuck Woodman. Again, uh, I brought some quick games to play. Justin O, Mayday Games. Um, this also is known by a lot of different names. Uh, it has some different versions, but Tok Tok Woodman is the uh, one that I have, even though I threw the box away. 
and I missed a couple pieces. But it's a super fun dexterity game where you are trying to hit off the dark pieces but leave the light pieces on there. And uh, you're hitting it with this little plastic axe. Uh, super fun uh, dexterity uh, tapping game. Uh, yeah, probably my favorite game in this sort of genre. Number 18, Lattice Hawaii. Another game that uh, my coworker introduced to me. I've never heard of this one, which is, you know, uh, was interesting. Uh, and it wasn't a terrible game, really. Uh, not really my style of game. It was a abstract, uh, abstract game where you are pulling these tiles out and you are trying to place them advantageously. So you get, like, some bonus turns. And, uh, and you're just trying to get through your stack of tiles. And I definitely, my brain does not work well in games like this. I don't understand how to do well. Uh, and I did not do well. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was an interesting uh, strategy game. Uh, if you like the like these tile placements and like trying to work uh, advantages. Um, I'm trying to think of another game that's sort of like this. Um, I know I've played one similar anyway it's not coming to me right now anyway if you enjoy uh, these back and forth like two player games um where you're just pulling tiles and you're trying to put them in the best position um uh and trying to get combos going together uh it's a fine game uh lattice hawaii number 17 doodle dungeon oh this one's kind of silly it actually surprises me how lowly this is ranked on bgg but um uh, it, it's it's silly and it's fun. It has the artwork from uh, 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 the guy who does Munchkin, uh, John Kovalich, and uh, very similar type of style. But what you are doing is you are uh, drawing, you're drafting these cards, and then using those cards, and they'll have different symbols or monsters on them, and then you get to draw those like wall pieces or monsters or traps, or sometimes it gives you upgrades, uh, and try to build a dungeon. Uh, that a hero is going to try and go through and then after you build your dungeon you're going to pass your paper to your neighbor your neighbor is going to draw the path that your dungeon uh, that the hero is trying to go through and you're hoping that your dungeon will beat the hero uh, without too much and then also you're like trying to hide some uh, uh, treasure and so uh, and you have to guard that treasure with monsters and if that treasure is still there you get some points for that which can be increased if you uh, upgrade how much they're worth and you know <laughs> it's kind of silly I don't know the strategy of like going through somebody else's dungeon like it's like you want to go attack all their monsters um, and, the, and the hero is pretty OP unless they have just really maxed out um, with the upgrades uh, to make them stronger um, and so your best I don't know but I don't know it's sort of this push and pull so if you do attack every monster, there's a good chance you're, the hero's going to die and they'll get a bunch of points. Uh, but if you don't, it's a good chance they're going to have a bunch of treasures at the end score a bunch of points. So it's sort of this weird um, strategy. There are also cards that you can collect that you can play uh, during the round where the heroes are going through. Um, and maybe the one criticism of the game is that part of the game tends to go fairly slow because everybody gets a turn and just it's kind of scripted out, but you kind of have to go one by one because people can play cards. And it slows the game down just a little bit. Not a lot, but it, it makes the game from like what's kind of a fun like 20 minute activity into like like a 40 minute game. Um, where it has like that um, a, like galaxy trucker where you're just watching your stuff get blown up. And, you know, mostly just bad things happen uh, for the second half of the game. But I have had fun with it every time I played it. The two times, anyway. Uh, anyway, Doodle Dungeon. Uh, number 16, Core Quest. I played this again. I played it solo uh, in January, and then in February I played it with somebody else. And, um, yeah, again, it just kind of confirms to me that these types of games are not my favorite types of games, uh, these dungeon crawly things. Um, but as far as dungeon crawls go, this is a fine one. Um, and, you know, and it's just adorable and, and fun and quick. Uh, like I said, I prefer this uh, to... Uh, Blue Maiden, the number one game on BGG. Like it, it's more my speed. Uh, it's not overly complex. Um, it's exciting. You know, it's not easy. You're gonna, you're, 
it's kind of built really well so that when you get to the end of the game, you're going to win or lose pretty close. It's been my uh, experience so far in my two plays. And uh, just, yeah, I don't know. It's silly fun. Core quest. Uh, number 15, 6, Nymphed. Another game uh, I, I got played. I've played this game quite a bit in my life. And um, it just goes over well with a variety of people. Uh, it's a good, I find this a really good game to introduce to people who aren't super into games. Um, uh, I've kind of introduced it to these group of men at work or at, uh, at church and, um, both groups, somebody left's like, where can I buy this game? You know? So anyway, Wolfgang Kramer, older, just really simple game where you get to pick one card each round. Uh, you're going to put the cards out according to numerical order, following the couple simple rules. You're trying not to get cards. Uh, and when you're the sixth card in a row, you, you take the other five cards and um and you total up your scores and it's hard to be really good at it um other people who maybe don't understand the game will make will ruin your perfect plans uh or sometimes you just miscount things or maybe you just have bad cards and you're going to take something but um i don't know you feel like you have some strategy but then there's a, a good dose of luck in there most people i have played it with enjoy it at least just a little bit anyway that's six nymphed uh, number 14 strike uh, another silly game um, you know, I picked this up on clearance and it's just been an absolute winner, uh, for a game I, I picked up on clearance and it is silly. It's fun. It's the most fun I have with the silliest game. Um, it's sort of like in that vein of talk, talk woodman where it is quick. It's fast. I don't know. I have fun with it. Strike number 13. Can't stop. Um, man, I haven't played the physical version of this for quite a while and I got my own copy, um, from, uh, from a gift exchange uh, that I did, and I just got this random copy of Can't Stop, and I got it played, and this is a really fun game. I've played it online a ton, which doesn't get reflected in my plays, um, because it works really well online. Uh, you can play it on um, BGA, you can play it on uh, uh, Yukata, whatever. There's lots of different versions of it out there. Uh, but what you do is you are rolling four dice, and you're making combinations of numbers, and you're moving your little token up each column. Uh, for sevens, there's a lot more than the twos and the twelves in line with how often those numbers get rolled. And you're trying to lock down three columns before your opponent does. Uh, and it's this great push your luck where you keep rolling. Uh, you can only have three columns getting scored each round. And if you ever roll and you can't move one of those three columns that you've kind of picked at the beginning of your turn, uh, you bust. And you don't get any progress. And I don't know. Great, great push of that game. Maybe one of the best of all time. Uh, number 12, Sushi Go. Uh, this uh, card drafting game just works really well. Played this with my kids. Uh, we had lots of fun with it. And um, I don't know, Sushi Go. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, number 11, number 9. Just really enjoying this tile laying game with these funky numbers. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's it's becoming one of these games although i haven't played it a ton i want to bring it out often and i feel like it fits some situations it plays two to four players or one to four player really if you're just trying to kill some time on your own it's a good little puzzle um but you play it four players simultaneous play so it just keep it runs really smoothly and it's just devilishly tricky um those numbers are diabolical uh getting them so they overlap correctly is nigh impossible sometimes um but yeah just lots of fun plays quick good game uh number 10 mining colony this is from steve finn uh, another new to me game this month and this is interesting um the one criticism i have is i don't love the graphic design on this game uh but it is it's pretty clever um you flip over these cards and there's these different numbers uh, where different things come out, like um, gems or different colored uh, resources uh, or those little tokens. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get them onto your board and onto like upgraded sites. And you're trying to get them across from each other so you can build buildings and do other things and you'll score some points at the end. Um, I need to play this one again. I did enjoy my first play um, quite a bit. Um, but I know I didn't fully understand the strategy in it. And um, it, I don't know. 
I really enjoyed the game, and uh, I'm not quite ready to talk more about it, but it was a good game. Uh, again, this is from the guy who designed uh, Biblios, uh, one of my all-time favorite games. Just a great game. Anyway, mind calling. Number nine, Trails of Tucana. I've been really excited about this game. I've had a pre-order for quite a while, and um, uh, it came in, so I got it sent over to me. And uh, I played it solo a few times, and uh, I played it with some other people. And uh, this game's really interesting because uh, what you do is you flip over two cards that have terrain types on them, and you have this um, this paper that has all the terrain types on it. If you can see the video, you can kind of see it there in the picture. And then you have to build in between those two terrain types um, that are right next to each other. And you can build it wherever it is on the on the board that's legal. And what you're trying to do is get these trails to go back to villages. And you get points for connecting villages. You get points for connecting uh, like these landmark sites that are out in the village. Um, you get some you get to do some bonus trails when you make certain connections. Uh, there's sort of a race when you're uh, to get connections from one village to another village. Um, whoever gets there first gets some bonus points. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's really interesting. It's really fun. You can play um, theoretically probably a big group all together at the same time. Um, I, don't know. I don't know if it's the best game because of the racing for points. It's probably uh, probably better with a smaller group, but you th theoretically you could play it with a big group. And um, I don't know. It just works. I think it works really well. Uh, I'll probably play this one some more. Uh, I really enjoyed it so far. Anyway, my number nine, Trails of Tucana. Uh, cat Lady. Uh, I got my Cat Lady played. Um, this is a game when I first played it, I was like kind of eh, meh on it. But every time I play it, it just something kind of clicks in my brain a little more about it. And I think about playing it more. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I was reviewing my ratings and I rate, ranked or rated this a 6.5 uh, at first, but I think I'm going to go through and change this to at least a 7. Um, just a really clever drafting game uh, where there's a grid of 9 cards out there and you take 3 of them at a time and then you move the cat and then you can't pick those 3 cards that it's looking at. Um, and there's ways to move it before or after your turn so you can kind of mess with uh, the, the people around you. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, one thing that's funny about the game is you can totally win without very many cats, which seems kind of weird. Uh, you need to be a cat lady, but you can get a bunch of costumes and get a bunch of bonus points that way. Uh, but anyway, cat lady. Uh, number seven, Rolling Realms. And this, I'm finding this to be one of my favorite like kind of solo experiences. If I got 20 minutes to kill, don't know what to do late at night, Rolling Realms, I've been pulling it out and really 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 enjoy this game uh, the little hook on this game is that uh, there are these different cards and they all score differently and they all work a little bit differently and they're all based on uh, games that are um, published by Stonemeyer games uh, and then every game they come out uh, there's a little promo and so I'm actually waiting for the promo from uh, or expansion I guess from their latest game Libertalia um, the winds of Gale Crest, something like that uh, I'm expecting that to come soon, and I'll get to add that little promo to the game, and I'll try that one out. But um, anyway, really really interesting solo game. Actually, I just played this two-player for the first time, but I'll talk about that next month um, because that was in this month. Anyway, number six, Tabanusi, the Builders of Ur. Uh, got to play this. Um, I, my previous play was solo. It was, I was pretty down on it. Uh, I got this played three-player, and it was pretty long, and but it was fun. Uh, de it was definitely uh, burned my brain just a little bit, like a lot of the games in these this T series does. Like Zul I remember the first time I played Zulkin, just totally fried my brain. First time I played Tekkenu, just so much overload. Um, Twenton Su, I remember my first plays, but it's like every play becomes a little bit better. So I probably should just play this game a couple more times um, as the rules get cemented in my brain a little bit better. It should flow better. Um, but yeah, there's just so much stuff, uh, going on in this game. Um, so like you pick a die from a, from a place and whatever number that die is, it sends you to a, another place and that's where your next action is going to be. So you're kind of pre-planning your actions, doing that, um, 
and just trying to get the right resources so you can build stuff, so you can build gardens, build buildings. Uh, it's all very kind of complicated the way that you do stuff. Um, but fairly satisfying, I guess. Uh, you know, like I said, that solo play was a mess. Did not have a ton of fun. Uh, my three-player game was fun, was more fun. Uh, I should probably get this another go. Number five, Savannah Park. Um, this is uh, Kramer and Kiesling uh, doing uh, some... Uh, um, I don't think what other games are like this. Uh, t uh, Tiny Towns, is that the name of it? Yeah, Tiny Towns. Uh, I got back here. It sort of reminds me of that because uh, on your turn, you get to pick one of the tiles that everybody else has, and then everybody has to move that tile. And the, all the tiles are randomized at the beginning of the game, and so you are kind of what's advantageous for you to move. Hopefully it's not advantageous for other people. Um, there's probably, if you're really good at the game, you could pay attention to what other people are doing and make better choices. I am not on that level yet. Um, but yeah, it's super fun trying to get uh, your animals set up the right way so you can score the most points. And it's not super difficult, uh, but I find the puzzle really satisfying. Um, look forward to playing this more. Hopefully this is a game that I get played quite a bit. Anyway, number five, Savannah Park. Uh, number four, Similo. Just this has just really become one of my all-time favorite games. It's competing with Code Names and Just One and and So Clover, which are just games I just really really enjoy. Uh, this one's a little easier to get to the table and get to play multiple times uh, when it comes out. And uh, yeah, I really like the spooky. I'm lo really looking forward to the Harry Potter uh, version that's going to come out. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Similo. Number three, Orleans. Um, haven't played this game in a long time, um, but I wanted to. I had a had a friend who was moving away and uh, wanted to get that played one more time, and uh, brought out an all time great um, and played it. I, you know, this one's you know it's ranked number twenty on BGG. I don't know if I rank it that high in my in my personal list, but it's a really really good game. Um, hopefully, I, I think someone's uh, picking this up. TMG, who's now def defunct, is the one is the version that I have. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, just a really good bag builder, and what you are doing is you are uh, pulling these tokens out of your bag, and then applying those tokens to places on your individual player board. And as you fulfill the requirements for that thing, you get to fulfill that action. There's a little map on the board that you're running your guy around and trying to visit different places and pick up resources, uh, which you can accumulate for points. And I don't know, I find the puzzle in this game just very satisfying. I think it re works really well as a two-player game. Uh, with more players, it also works pretty well, just because it takes a little bit longer. Uh, there's a whole stack of these buildings, and depending on your strat, you can change your strategy based on those buildings and try some different things. I'm not particularly good at it, but I do enjoy it. So my number three this month is Orleans. And number two is a new to me game and Meadow. Um, I need to play this game more for sure, but it really struck me how, how smooth this played. Um, it does a thing that uh, another game I really like does, and it's called Quadropolis, uh, where you have these little arrow tokens and you point them, and they all have a number on them, and you point them up, down a row or column, and then you count that number, and that's what card you take. And so uh, it creates some limitations in what you can do, and as the round goes along, you have these limitations. But you can always get something, uh, but you got to kind of think ahead, and, and more cards come out as cards get taken away. Uh, there's also this other board where instead of having that arrow pointed towards something, you could go to the, the campfire. And there's some different actions that you can do there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, really, really, really like this game. Uh, really glad that I was able to get a copy, and um, uh, hopefully I get this played a bunch more because I do really enjoy it. Um, it almost hit, kind of hits that same sweet spot as like Cascadia, which I've been loving a ton, um, and uh, kind of feel like they compete for the same like gaming time space. But um, yeah, anyway, great, great game. Really looking forward to playing it more. Meadow from Clemens Kaliki and Rebel Studio. 
Anyway, and my number one game of this month is another new to me game. Um, it's a long game. It's uh, related to one of my all-time favorite games, and that is uh, Boone Lake from Alexander Pfister and Capstone Games. Uh, Alexander Pfister designed uh, what used to be, I used to consider my all-time favorite game of all time, uh, Great Western Trail. Um, it, it slipped to number two this last year when I did my rankings. But, um, but man, Boone Lake is real good. Uh, Capstone Games uh, had previously uh, published uh, Maracaibo, um, all the, also by Alexander Pfister, and also kind of all three of these games kind of have this same um, DNA where you're going around a circle or in Boone Lake you're going down this river and then you'll go back up the top of the river and come back down it again. Uh, Boone Lake, uh, actually Mark Hybo and, and Great Western Trail actually feel a lot the same to me. Uh, Boone Lake feels a little bit different and the main thing is if you, if you can see on the picture there on the right, um, uh, the way you choose your action is based on these tiles. So you pick the tile and that act and you do the things on the action another great thing that this game does is every time someone picks an action um other players have opportunity to do something either something very similar maybe with a little extra cost or slightly different thing um uh, if you see on the picture that blue tile there um so the active player gets to play a card or turn in a card for two bucks and then they get to play two tiles and put a guy down and another player doesn't get to do any of that stuff but they get to draw two cards and play a card um, with less limitations. And so you like every turn, when it's either it's your turn or somebody else's turn, you are making active decisions that are going to impact how well you're doing in this game. And it just keeps me engaged. My first play was actually super long, but I enjoyed every minute of it, um, really. And I don't know. I, I've played this a number of times. Um, since that first play, um, officially six on, on this, but I'll tell you, I've actually played a couple more times here in March and, um, man, I'm just really, really enjoying this game. This was my number one game. Uh, so far, this is my number one game of the year, I would say. And, um, we'll see how, how that holds up for the rest of the year. Still a long, long ways to go, but man, so far, really, really enjoying this game. Um, and, uh. Yeah, I don't know. It's my number one game. But, um, yeah, that's wrapping up for this month, uh, for the month of uh, February of 2022. And um, we'll see you next time or something. I don't know. Let me come up with a tagline. Where? I'm making a YouTube video, Bev.